point, I know you're talking. I'm talking about you, and you have no idea I'm here. Look at that. He looks like he, he knows I'm here. That's funny. Meanwhile, I'm in here, and somehow the door is open, and I've escaped. We're assigned to a manifest today. It's running as Q359. Head over and join me in the cab. All right, folks. So whatever you do, don't accidentally walk on the tracks while you've got a train coming like this. This is the dumbest thing you could ever do because, you know, in a game like this, you would think you survive. But unfortunately, the train does pick you up and you start to roll along like this. Um, generally, there's no way out of this. But if you're really good, you can kind of finagle the system and wiggle your way out. And eventually, the train sort of will glitch out on you like this. And you'll just be glitched. And if you're really lucky, I'm still being pulled along. This sucks. Okay. If you're really lucky, you can find the exit somehow in this train and get yourself out. It looks like I'm going to be stuck here forever, folks. Well... That's wait 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 I got it I got it I'm gonna be out oh my god I'm gonna be out of this look at it look at look at look 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 there it goes there it goes oh my god I got out I'm free don't try that at home people please don't try that at home if you do that you will definitely be gone forever our manifest today so to speak is an ice and snow and our goal is to climb aboard that locomotive I originally thought it was this one that just passed us by but whatever it's not that locomotive and our goal here is to turn on Gen Field. Turn on the light, turn on the MUA tip, M2A valve, do some stuff where it breaks, put our things in the reverse um, or forward, move our train. And believe it or not, the service is supposed to start at 10 o'clock. It's already 10.02. That's not happening. So screw that. And our goal now is to couple to 60 vehicles. According to our map here, we are currently set nearby the roundhouse there and and or the turntable so to speak and we're going to be taking this train this game does not tell you exactly where you have to go so you have to kind of do some intuition it's either this big long train that's ready to set out or it's this big long train that it's not even got any engines on it or is this tiny train we know it's not the tiny train after we do that we gotta essentially put the train on full service shut it off at least and once we get our train what I mean by shut it off is essentially set the train so it doesn't move anymore. Um, and then eventually get our train moving, stop at a location, Viaduct Junction. So this is actually Viaduct Junction where we got to stop first. Rockwood Junction is all the way pretty much at the very other end of this game. So Rockwood Mine, so to speak. So we've got a long mission. So let's go ahead and hop in this train and get this ball rolling. Our first job, of course, is to get our train set up. So let's go ahead and Climb up the step tier, check for our handbrake, make sure it's released. It wants us to sit in the engineer's seat, whatever. We're just going to do what it says. So first it wants to set us our gen fuel to on in this engine. So engine run, gen fuel on, control fuel pump on. And it wants us to set up our ditch light and our gauge light and our headlight. This can go to dim for right now. In fact, it says it wants to be on bright. Well, we're going to put it on medium. I think medium is a better one. We're going to take the back one to put it on dim mu2a valve is set to trail 626 this train is not moving so that's good news so now we're going to put this on leader dead we're going to set the cutout valve to freight and we're going to set the automatic brake handle to release and our independent brake to full application before we need to do anything and before we even blow that whistle let's go outside we have a whole host of engines in fact um there is four engines in here. That is a lot of engines. So technically we can haul this to where it needs to be and then set our engines up then, or we could do the work to set up our engines now. Lower horn and do some stuff with the bell. Insert the reverser here at the handle. I apparently forgot to stick that in there. Let's see where we want to go. It wants us to go in reverse. And that means we're going to be going actually not even in this direction. We're going to be going back in that direction. So this is our field of travel, so to speak. This one actually, this is nice. It actually told me where to go for one. So it didn't actually put the little icon up here, at least not yet. But this is where we're going to end up. And it's very important to set your switches. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut here and I'm going to come back once all of these switches are properly set. All right, folks. So I am back in after switching the switches around a little bit. We're going to release our independent brake. We're going to bail that off. And actually, before we get moving, I probably should remember this. Um, I do want to turn on my lumber number light in the main engine. And I'm going to set this to controlling with unit coupled at long hood end for right now. And I actually want to turn on not 
the radio right now, but I want to turn on the warning devices. And we're just gonna check the fuse, make sure that works. I want to turn on warning devices because I actually had a really fun game the last time using warning and working with the audible, um, the alerter box right there, and just trying to do my best with it. This this one here is kind of hard to do this, so to speak. I didn't set up any of the other engines in case you're wondering. And what we're going to be doing, we're going to be backing out of here. As you can see, we can't see jack of anything. So we're just going to go to the very back camera and see what we're looking at here. Um, our trains are covered in ice and snow, as the episode indicates, right? But what's really interesting is the top piece actually isn't covered by any snow. So to speak, so when it melts, it's basically the exact same color. It's really kind of funny here. And then at some point, it's going to ask me to switch out the switch and actually it doesn't even say to do any of that it just says to go that way and quite frankly if you look at the map it doesn't even say to stop or anything so it's really up to you to do all the stopping and for us to do this right we want to get in on one two three we want to get essentially three two tracks over from this point here and i'm going to go to camera eight and we're going to switch over two tracks this way one and two and we're just going to go zoom in all the way down here. So essentially what we want to do is we want to pass this one switch right here. Actually, let's think about that, do we? Yeah, we want to pass that one switch. This one here, I always forget. This one goes to a little siding and there's nothing that it goes to. And that would suck if I got stuck there. Oh, the alerter. Oh my gosh. Yeah, so... um. This one goes to a siding, the one on the right, the one in the middle here, the one that actually turns to the right here. This is the one we're looking for. And we just want our very front engine to be right in front of the switch before we turn the switch here. All right, folks, our train is now rolling past the switch. All we got to do is slow our train down. If I didn't already accidentally over slow this train, it looks like I may have. So I'm just going to release the independent brake just for a second, just to make sure we do roll past here. And again, what we're looking for is the very front wheels to get past the switch that we want to use. And then we're going to get this train rolling on to the other side of Cumberland Yard so we can hook up to that big long 60 car freight train. And I better hit the alerter before something stupid happens and I kill the mission because of the alerter. So let's go ahead and stick our independent brake on and there we go. Okay, good. Whew. I almost didn't make it. So as we can see here, we're about rolling about two miles an hour and that should be enough to cover the switch. We'll just get this train to stop. Make sure we actually ended up at the right switch there. That is perfect. We're going to go ahead and flip the switch. Notice the game did not even tell you to drive the train forward. They're done with introduction. They're done with instruction. They're like, you know how to drive this train now that we taught you horrible, bad instructions. So we're just going to drive the train, it says. So that's what we're going to do. And as it as I already did, I moved the train to forward and we're going to hit the gas pedal to forward and throttle one. And all we have to do is keep it that um, 15 miles an hour. And I realized my brake was still on. Isn't that fun? So while this train's rolling, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and start looking at switches. I will meet you guys in just a minute. All right, guys, our train is definitely heading out. I checked all the switches one more time. It doesn't hurt, honestly, to check your switches three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times, whatever you have to do. Um, do it anyways, just for the sake of convenience and benefit of your train. Um, I'd rather you check a switch three, four, five times than screw yourself over and end up on the wrong track, like I almost did with the siding there. Is this not the weirdest road crossing right here? This road is like completely snow free, and it, there's another road right there completely snow free, but there's like no actual crossing here. So, how the heck do the cars actually get over? This road it makes no sense to me i'm sorry and we're essentially going to be going straight through this particular switch the first one not the second one notice the red on the switch versus the green you can actually see it better from this direction notice the red on the switch it highlights the fact that this train is coming off the right versus the straight shot there so we do want to turn this one switch here not so much the other one in the meantime because we are passing the switch we probably should slow this train down now um, this is probably what looks it looks like right off the road when you're about this tall, you know what I mean? This train's not slowing down, man. We gotta get this train slowing or it's gonna drive all the way to Rockland. Oh god, the alerter. It's gonna drive all the way to Rockland Mind without me. That would or Rockwood Mind without me. That would not be fun. 3.8, 3.7, and a little more slow down here. And with that, we can stop our train right about there. We're gonna turn the switch. 
I'm going to look at the map, make sure all the other switches are good, or I could do this the old-fashioned way of literally walking my way over there. All right, so let's get our train moving forward. Hit the alerter before I do anything, and we're going to watch our train roll forward. Oh, I probably should turn off the independent brake. That would be so important to me, wouldn't it? Um, by the way, wait, 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 train, wait, wait. Why are you going that way? No, 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 no. We want to go forward, train, forward, not backwards. Let's see, what am I doing here? Okay, it is on forward now. Okay, good. That's what I was trying to, wait, what are you, wait, come on, train. Okay, this is not right. It's not right. I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing. I've been training you guys on missions here all this time. I want to go in reverse. I thought I'm in that engine, but I'm not in that engine. I'm in the I'm in the other engine. Alerter. Oh my god, I'm already panicking and this mission hadn't even started. What the heck, man? This is also why you want to make sure this is on cutout, because these connectors instantly connect. They shall they shouldn't do that. They normally should be eased into the connection eased into the valves and whatnot um we are going way too fast here come on two miles an hour i feel more comfortable when i'm rolling in like a two 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 and a half one mile whatnot um even now i'm saying that so we should not set off our pts valve so let's see what happens oh we hit that one really hard there so let's go ahead and lock in our independent brake we did not set off our pts valve notice the brake pipe pressure now and how low it is and here's our reserve pressure here this is what's going to set off our pcs valve if this entire tank gets evacuated we do not want to do that very important especially if you're doing alerter stuff with warnings and whatnot it says set the automatic brake to full service um what that's going to do for us if we just set this up to initial reduction it's going to lower the brake pipe pressure just a little bit if we set this up at any part of the service and if we just go all the way to full service just for the heck of it um sure if you want me to bail off the the automatic independent brake i'll do it fine but if you notice the brake pressure here look at this is that six psi we have 63 here we actually have to bleed the brakes out so we're not even going to release this yet we're going to bleed the brakes out we're going to go down to suppression and then we're going to go down to handle off i know it bounces back handle off i said and we're going to let this brake pressure go down to pretty close to six not all the way to six, but as close as we can. It's going to take a few seconds to get there. It won't take that long. And then what I'm going to do from there is I'm going to go in the other direction and fill up the brake pipes. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6. That will do it. Thank you. We'll put this on full service. Um, because it wants me to do this, I am going to do this. So fine. We're going to bail this guy off. It's going to be annoying. My train might move if I do it. Tell me what you want me to do now. Set the automatic brakes to release and down the horn twice. We are not doing that, so we're going to put this back on. And I'm just going to blow the horn here. And I am just going to release this for a second. We haven't set up any of the engines. This game didn't give you any instructions on setting up the engine. I didn't even set it up that way when I first got out here. Um, all I did was basically drive this train and park it. That's all I did. So here's what we're going to do. Um, I actually am going to put this in forward just because it wants me to. Cumberland Tower, this is Q359 requesting departure from Cumberland. Over. Q359, subject to signal indications, proceed as far as Viaduct Junction. Over. Cumberland Tower, Q359, proceeding to Viaduct Junction. Out. What we're going to do before you even drive this train or go anywhere with this, we're going to put this back on neutral for now. We're going to hop out of this engine and we're going to set up the rest of the train. I'm going to turn off the warning devices because I don't need the alerter going off on me as I roll along, as I roll along here. What we do want to do, by the way, is because we want, we have four engines here we want to go all the way to the back of our train make sure we have no engines in the back that's very important because that's going to determine the consist of your train on the screen you'll see that wonderful um spreadsheet that does a really great job ignore the stuff that's the three and four on the other side of the box cards because we got no three and four back here instead our three and four is piled up in here so essentially what we're doing is one two 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 if you already know how to train set up don't worry about all this enjoy the ride and enjoy the trip we're going to be in this engine here this is the very back engine first thing we're going to do is put this to control from another unit coupled at either end we are going to turn on our number lights in this engine. We don't need engine room lights. We do need platform lights. We're going to leave that alone. We're going to hop in this seat here. We don't need to touch our any of our headlights. What we do want to make sure is our engine run is off. Our gen field is off. 
and our control and fuel pump is off. So like the spreadsheet says, and um, on trail two, we're gonna be repeating trail two over and over and over again, right? Um, we don't need ditch lights because it's not the front engine. We'll keep the step lights. We don't need our um, gauge lights, so leave that one off. Don't really need anything else. We wanna make sure our automatic handle is off, our brake, our independent brake is on release, cutout valve set to cut out, and our MU two way valve is still set to trail six twenty six. Inside the fuse cabinet, one last thing to check is make sure the radio is off in this engine. We don't need warning devices. This one does not have any distributed power, so ignore the distributed power. Don't need to worry about that line for right now. Um, that's more like an AC4400 or whatever that engine called. Um, so this engine's officially set up. This just happened to be 8161. We are now going to go to 2415 and we're going to set this engine up. I'm going to do the same thing here, turn on the number lights. I'm going to set this to controlled by another unit coupled at either end. I am, since I'm here, make sure the radio is turned off, make sure the warning devices are off. Don't need to worry about anything else. If you really want to go for a little extra realism, you could check your view light, make sure they work. It's always fine. I don't mind. Um, just like the last engine for Trail 2, off engine run, gen field off, control fuel pump off. Light don't need to worry about, throttle, don't, none of this worry about, none of these things here, none of this stuff. Independent brake release, automatic brake off, cut out, cut out, and U2A valve trail 626. And if I do this one more time, you hopefully will get the idea. Next engine, oh, and see, this is why the handbrake is already released. We probably wouldn't have been able to move the train if otherwise. I shouldn't sit in the engineer's seat because I probably should set up my number light first. Do things consistently so you can just be consistent with what you do in the train. Control from another unit, couple to either end. Light, check. Uh, fuse, if you want to check, check. Radio off. Warning devices off. Check. Seat in. Over here. Engine run off. Gen field off. Control fuel pump off. The idea behind this, again, if you turn all of these off, you get the power and the brakes. If you leave these things on, you don't get these things that like you want. They become almost independent engines of each other. Don't want to do that. Automatic handle off. Independent brake release. Cut out. Cut off valve. Cut out. I know it said cut out twice, but whatever. MU two-way valve set trail 626. This engine's ready to go. Oh, and you know, the only thing I forgot to didn't check was the banking comm and the other two engines, but I know they're already off, so I'm not going to worry about those. But make sure you don't turn on the banking comm in any of these engines. You don't need them in these ones. Um, now that we're in the front engine one more time, that door is open, so we're going to use it. Controlling with unit coupled at short hood end, controlling with unit coupled at long hood end, which is where that is. We're not going to turn on these warnings or radio just yet. We're going to make sure we have our engine set up. We know these three are on because I left them on. Um, we know these are on because I left these on as well. Keep that in mind. Um, the MUA2, MU2A valve is already set to lead or dead because we did that to get here. The one thing we do have to make sure is our cutout valve needs to get to freight. And this is why we bled the pipe so we didn't have our PCS valve turn on on us. So I want to get in. I can't reach. There it is. Cutout now set to freight. And as you can see there, it is filling up our brake pipes. And notice that it is doing it really quickly here um, for the first one. And the other one's going to take forever to do that. Brake pipe pressure is finally full. No, it is not. It's at 75. So what we're going to do is we're going to keep our independent brake on. And now that we're finally here with brake pipe pressure, we can turn on the radio. We can turn on the warning devices. We can close our fuel cabinet. We can turn on our banking comm, even though we probably don't need it anyways. Let's contact the Stingler. It says denied. We have nowhere to go because we don't even have a route for this train. Fine. So let's go ahead and release our automatic brake. Fill up the rest of our brake pipe to... Why is it going that high? 109. I feel like this is... Oh, God. Passenger service. Freight service. Thank you. Somebody didn't tell me that I set this on passenger service. My goodness. It probably wouldn't have mattered having the extra brake pressure. Um, but we're a freight train and other things will probably go wrong with this game if you set it on the wrong setting before it's too late. So once our brake pressure is up to 89, we're going to be setting up. We're going to blow our horn. And we're going to set our throttle to 1. If we have our train set up properly, there's Viaduct location. My god, 8800. Where the heck are you, Viaduct Junction? Way up there. So once we get this thing going here... Um, 
We're going to release our independent brake, bail that off, and our train should naturally start to move. This is only a throttle one, folks, and I shouldn't have to do anything. This train should move. Let's see what happens here. Let's see if it can get there. Oh, by the way, the master reserve here is slowly sinking, so it's okay. Come on, train. I know you got this. All right, we'll put this on throttle too. You know what I noticed? I got no power. What the heck, man? This game jinked me. I got no power. Look at that. My engines are running. What? What in the world? Why is my train not moving, folks? This is annoying sometimes. Oh, hello. Maybe I should put the reverser on forward. Yeah, like the important detail, right? Okay, throttle one. There's my amperes. Why the heck is my train not moving? I can't believe I'm going blind in this. Throttle one, four train cars. These four guys set up properly. Your train moves on throttle one. In fact, no, it doesn't. It goes backwards because the cars are kind of bumping against each other. But throttle one will get your train moving. This is kind of how you know you got your train set up right. And if you just leave it on throttle one, it eventually will start rolling down the track at some point once the pressure gets going and the train starts moving and it kind of gets the feedback going to the rest of the cars there. In fact, we might just have to go to throttle two to get this train moving. We're going to make sure we got the automatic brake released and the bail off on the other one. Let's go back to throttle one and see if we could just let this go on throttle one. And our train is finally on a roll here, folks. Our train is about 60 cars long. We've got some tankers here. I don't exactly know what they're filled in with. Let's go see. Can we see what's in there? It's got some liquid, so it's got some kind of fuel in there. I don't know what it is. Apparently, we get coal and other stuff, but whatever that fuel is. We got some box cars with nothing in them as well. We got these what appears to be grain cars, also with nothing in them, right? This train sim is realistic. It gives you everything you ever wanted in a train sim. There we go. That's better. I want to be in this front camera. Next to my buddy. We gotta get this guy a name at some point. I know you're talking. I'm talking about you and you have no idea I'm here. Look at that. He looks like he, he knows I'm here. That's funny. Meanwhile, I'm in here and somehow the door is open and I've escaped. I don't know how that's possible. Okay, I'm in here. Let's go back outside. Did that door open again? It didn't. That's, look at that. I came back. I'm driving the train. I'm non-existent. What the heck? That's so crazy. I love train sims. Anyways, Train Sim World 2 is a beta version of this game, right? Oh, God's alerter. Jeez, man. Not the singular, the alerter. Anyway, so Train Sim World 2, before it became Train Sim World 2, was Train Sim World 2020, 1918, 17, and then a beta. So a lot of these missions were from, like, the beta day, or, in other words, two of them. Um, and so there's a lot of glitches in the early games that probably weren't there in the later games. This is probably why I'm enjoying this one a lot. It gives you that little extra challenge of how do you get a gold medal with 6950 AP points. Just so you know, 6950 AP points. I wrote that down so I don't forget this time. I guess probably where you want to know next in terms of um, what I ended up doing with that MBA. I haven't done anything with it yet. Um, I'm still waiting for my degree papers. By the time you watch this episode, I probably have my degree papers by then. But in the meantime, I don't have it yet. Waiting for final grades to post. I know I kind of graduated because I know I get it really good on the final project and the capstone and all that good stuff. So it's just waiting on that. In the meantime, I'm I was hoping to have the brand new logo up. And running it kind of looks similar to the old one because I liked how the old one dialed um, my best friend just made that for me loved her for doing that really sweet lady to do it and she actually made my old logo out of Minecraft blocks so what do you see on my old logo from way back when so to speak it really is Minecraft blocks and I actually created a picture out of that thank you Adobe Photoshop for the wonderful picture idea and Adobe Photoshop did a, did wonders there. We're gonna we're, we're, I know we have a horn coming up because there's Cumberland Station out there. Um, let's go out here. We should be seeing the whistle stop somewhere, but oh well. Um, but yeah, so she did that for me. First pick the first logo, and what I'm doing is rebranding it. Oh God, she alerted her. Why? Right in the middle of conversation. Anyhow, so I'm rebranding it. I'm adding some extra colors to it. I'm kind of doing some redesigns. I'm also trying to do the watermark the same way. I, I, get some extra redesigns on the watermark but yeah so after that i'm hoping to get my banner redone as well and find someone to help me do that so once the logo is set up it's almost done there's a couple more minor things i gotta work on let's just say hello to this dude why not and the banner i'm not exactly sure what that's gonna look like we'll see 
you know, when I got a little more time to kind of dig into it, what I want my banner to look like, I kind of want something to pop. If you're not young like me, so to speak, you will have no idea what I'm talking about when you go to work at 11, right? When you get your first job officially at like 15, before you even drive, when you already like have hours into things like social security before you even turn 21, right? So some of the younger folks, that has not happened yet. They don't get their first job until much later in life. But back in the day, we got jobs first thing off. You know, some of the first jobs I had was taking care of dogs, right? Um, I was helping the neighbors with that because my neighbors would go on vacation and they needed some help with their dogs and some time to essentially care for them and whatnot. So I had a few neighbors I was doing that for. Then eventually upgraded to paper, delivering papers back when we had newspapers delivered to our door, door to door. That was a fun job. I enjoyed that. I got to cycle, ride my bike with a bunch of papers wrapped around the outside and, you know, tossing papers left and right. However, I was really good about this. I always made sure everybody had their paper on their front porch unless they unless they were not in a very nice neighbor. So I had a few, so basically when you're a paper boy, people tip you, especially in the holidays. So I had some really, really good tippers. I always made sure to tip the people who tip. I make sure they put their papers exactly right there on their front porch, right on the little welcome mat to make sure it's nice and secure. Even if I rode my bike all the way to the front door. Anyways, our stop's coming up here at Viaduct Junction and we're gonna be pulling this train to a stop maybe on this episode early at this stop and do the next episode the next stop although i think that let's see how many times they said stop in a row that stop likely oh my gosh that would be insane because it's a, like a two hour journey up the hill and down the hill yikes so maybe i'll do one going to the summit and one going down the summit i think that's probably what i'll do we're at about 800 feet away. We probably should start stopping our train. This would be a good time to set up initial reduction. Keep in mind, initial reduction is for all the cars behind you. Don't worry about so much about your independent brake there. I slowed down so much. Wow, this train's gonna stop at the wrong place. This is not where I wanna stop. This is not where I wanna stop. Don't stop here, train. Come on, get, 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 go, 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 go. I stopped in the wrong place. I put too much in initial reduction. We're not moving now. So this train's coming to a stop and 60 feet, apparently. I'm going to have to keep doing throttle one because we got a grade here. And the only way we're going to stop this is to keep going forward, so to speak. And then what we're going to do is I'm actually going to throw on my independent brake because I don't need to turn on my automatic brake right now. Come on, come on, train. You can do this. Come on. No, stop now. Just keep going. I don't want to have to turn off the throttle. Yes, go. Come on. 18 feet. We got this. We got this train. Look at that. That's awesome right back there. Come on. Well, it's going to stop here. It's going to trigger anyways. We're just going to let it come to a stop. It'll be fine. This is Q359 requesting a track warrant from Cumberland to Rockwood Junction. Over. Q359, subject to signal indications. Proceed from Cumberland to Rockwood Junction. Other trains are reporting a mix of conditions out there, so have a safe trip. Over. Thanks for that dispatch. Q359, subject to signal indications, proceeding from Cumberland to Rockwood Junction. Out. So where are we going? We are going all the way to the end of the line. Yeah, no thank you. What we're probably going to do in the next episode, just go up to the uh, the, the summit of Alan, Alan, Alan Gee's summit of Sand Patch Grade. And that's make as far as we're going to go. We're not going to go any further than that. For now, we're going to stop in this episode and we're going to keep this train rolling in the next one to see how far we can get with our 27 mile trip. So as usual, like, subscribe, leave me comments. If you want to see the back end of the train, here's the very back of our train and where it is. Um, I don't believe it's actually anywhere near Cumberland Station yet. It didn't even cross over the bridge. I can't even go through this. I want to see what this building is, man. Oh, well, whatever. Anyhow, so we'll see you in the next one, folks. Thank you. Bye. This is it. This is it. We got to slow down, people. We got to slow down here. This is the track it's going to send me on, I think. Oh, no, it's not. Okay. Well, I'm going to keep going forward then. Okay. I thought it was this one. Wow, I thought it was this one. Okay, well, ne never mind. I thought this was it. Okay, we can keep going. I scared myself, and I, I jumped to conclusion too fast. This was the wrong section. We can oh, wheel flip, wheel flip. 